Sugar Ali Sports TV presents The Physics of Boxing We will discuss motion in boxing. In physics, motion is the phenomenon in which an object changes its position over time. When a punch moves from the guard position to strike an opponent, it is said to be in motion. When it lands on its target, it either stops or slides off. The natural property of a punch is to try to maintain its state of motion is called inertia. Distance and time underlie the three things needed to describe motion, which is speed, velocity, and acceleration. Speed is distance divided by time, or speed equals distance divided by time. Another way of saying this is to say speed equals distance per time. When a punch travels the distance to strike an opponent in a measured time frame, it is said to be moving at a certain speed. Velocity is the punch speed in the direction it is moving to land at its target. When a punch accelerates, its speed or direction aimed at an opponent has been changed per time. Another way of saying this is that the acceleration equals change in velocity divided by time. Study this video insert of a fighter doing various offensive, defensive, and counter punch moves on heavy bag. Laws of Motion Isaac Newton has three laws of motion. Law 1 states that every body continues in its state of rest, or of uniform motion in a straight line, unless it is compelled to change that state by forces impressed upon it. This law is applied when the boxer impresses the forces of his punches upon an opponent. But, the opponent's body will attempt to resist this change impressed upon it by the punches landed. This is called the body's inertia, which is a resistance to change. The second law states that the acceleration of a body is directly proportional to the net force acting on the body, and inversely proportional to the mass of the body. In other words acceleration equals force divided by mass. This means that when the force of an opponent's punch increases acceleration, which is a change in the speed or direction of the body is moving in, the mass of the opponent's body basically remains the same. The weight will decrease due to loss of fluids, but this will not change the body mass of the opponent. The third law of motion states that to every action force, there is always opposed an equal reaction force. Striking your opponent with a forceful punch to take the energy out of him her takes an equal and opposite amount of exerted energy and calorie loss. Energy Energy is the ability to do work. The work done on an object by an applied force is defined and measured by the product of the force and the distance through which the object moves. Work equals force times distance or W equals F times D. An in great conditioned and energetic fighter has the ability to do some work on his opponent that goes a prescribed distance of rounds. A punch by a fighter has energy of motion that is called kinetic energy. The kinetic energy of a boxer's punch is equal to half its mass multiplied by its velocity squared, or kinetic energy equals one half times m times v squared. Kinetic energy also equals the work that it can do. So, F times D equals one half times M times V squared. An energy system tends towards a state of disorder as time goes on. As more and more energy is put out disorder increases and the ability to do work decreases. A fighter's disordered energy can be changed back into ordered energy by concentrating and refocusing his energy in an organized and disciplined manner. The measure of disorder is called entropy. Study this video insert of a fighter punching the heavy bag by throwing power shots and speed punches to demonstrate kinetic energy, and fatigue setting in that reduces sharpness and increases entropy. Momentum The body moving forward of a big fighter is harder to stop than a small fighter moving at the same speed. We say that the big fighter has more momentum than the small fighter. Momentum means inertia and motion which is the product of the mass of a fighter and his or her velocity. This is, momentum equals mass times velocity, or momentum equals mv. Let's consider a force acting on an object through some interval of time. Force times time equals a gain in the momentum of the object. Force times time is called impulse. Impulse equals change in momentum, 
or F times T equals change in M times V. The force of impact is proportional to the change in velocity of the moving object. So, F times T equals impulse. When a fighter wants to add force F to his or her punch, then the following formula must be memorized. Force equals impulse divided by time. So, to increase the force of the punch, the time that the punch makes contact with the opponent's body must decrease. A quick, snapping punch that is perfectly timed has a greater force on the opponent. Muhammad Ali was a master of rolling with punches. The science of rolling with a punch is to increase the time that the punch makes contact with the body by letting it roll off a larger surface of body. In this case, the head or chin is the rolling body surface that prolongs the time that the punch is in contact with the body, and the whole body is being used to absorb the full impact of the punch like an elastic spring mechanism. Study this video insert of a fighter demonstrating a change in momentum by punching a heavy bag. The heavy bag stops the punch to produce a change in momentum, which is called an impact. Rotational motion The previous discussion of motion along a straight line path is called linear motion. The same basic laws also applies to rotational motion. Rotational motion means the rotating of a body about an axis, whether it is inside or outside of the body. Center of gravity The rotating body has a center of mass, also called the center of gravity. The center of mass is the average position of all the particles of the mass that make up the body. The center of gravity is the average position of weight distribution. The rotating object or body rotates or wobbles about this center of gravity or center of mass. To find the center of gravity or center of mass of a straight wooden stick, one will find that it is located at the middle point of the stick. To find the center of gravity of an irregular shaped object or body one has only to draw a single line from its point of suspension while holding it up at a certain point. Beneath this point of suspension is the center of gravity point. Now, hang the line down a different point of suspension on the irregular shaped object or body. Punch moves from the guard position to strike an opponent. It is said to be in motion. When it lands on a target, it either stops or slides off. The natural property of a punch is to try to maintain its state of motion that is called inertia. With both feet close together, and a straight line drops down, and lands inside his body, the fighter is in stable equilibrium. If a fighter stands straight with both feet close together, and a straight line drops down while an opponent pushes his body one foot to the left or right side, the line will extend outside the body. Then at this point of position, the fighter is in an unstable position. The fighter will stumble and fall. To prevent a fighter from falling or being pushed over by his opponent, he must have his feet wider apart, wide base, to create a low center of gravity. Study this video insert of a fighter demonstrating the feet being drawn into close and spread to create a stronger base that is more stable. Torque. When a fighter ducks or bob and weave to avoid a punch from an opponent, he will not tip off balance as long as the center of gravity line from the center of his body don't falls beyond or past the feet. If the combination of the head, body, and buttocks moves the center of gravity line past or beyond the feet, the fighter will tip over or torque. A torque is brought about by a force that is off center. The body is beginning to rotate. Study this video insert of a fighter properly bobbing and weaving, and improperly bobbing and weaving out too far, thus tipping off balance. Rotational Inertia According to Newton's first law, an object at rest tends to stay at rest, and an object in motion tends to remain moving in a straight line. Likewise, an object or body rotating about an axis tends to remain rotating about the same axis unless acted upon by an unbalanced external torque. And, a torque is brought about by a force that is off-center. This object or body has rotational inertia. The rotational inertia of an object or body depends on the mass of the object or body.
It also depends on the distribution of the mass with respect to the axis of rotation. The greater the distance between the greater part of an object or body mass and its axis of rotation, the greater is the rotational inertia. For example, the closer a fighter puts the weights of a barbell together, the easier it is to handle the barbell and its weights. An example is when a fighter is running or doing road work. It's difficult to run or do road work with the legs straight. A fighter doing road work must bend his legs slightly to reduce their rotational inertia so he can rotate them back and forth in a quicker movement. Study this video insert of a fighter simulating running with legs straight and legs bent for faster speed. Angular momentum. A mass moving in a straight line has linear momentum. And, a mass moving in a circular path has angular momentum. Angular momentum is a measure of the rotational property of an object or body in motion. In addition to mass, m, and speed, v, angular momentum depends of the distance, r, between the mass and the axis about which it rotates. Angular momentum equals mvr. Newton's first law states that a body or system of bodies will maintain its state of angular momentum unless acted upon by an unbalanced external torque. Conservation of angular momentum There is a law of the conservation of angular momentum for bodies in rotation, providing that no unbalanced external torque acts on the rotating system, the angular momentum of this system will not change. We know that angular momentum equals m times v times r. If we wanted to increase hand speed when r, which represents the radius of the hand's distance away from the body when throwing left and right hooks, what has to be done? We must first look at the equation for angular momentum which equals m times v times r. The velocity, v, means speed and direction. Velocity, v, equals angular momentum divided by m times r. Since r radius is in the denominator, every time we decrease r, then, v, which is comprised of speed and direction will increase. There will be no change in direction, but there will be a change in speed when r radius is decreased. Likewise, when R is increased the speed will decrease. Pulling the elbows in closer to the body when throwing a left or right hook will increase the speed of the punch. Likewise, extending the hands farther away from the body when throwing a left or right hook will decrease the speed of the punch. You can say that the body contracts or expands when the elbows are drawn in closer or extended out farther from the body. Study this video insert of a fighter throwing a left hook demonstration with arms away from the body and pulled in closer to the body. Come back for the next episode of Sugar Ali Sports TV. Make sure you click on the like button, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to be noticed of future uploaded videos.